setting in motion the wheel of truth. Thus have I heard. The Blessed One was once living in the deer park at Isipatana, the resort of Sears, near Bianasi, Benares. There he addressed the group of five bhikkhus, kickers, these two extremes ought not to be practiced by one who has gone forth from the household life. What are the two? There is devotion to the indulgence of sense pleasures, which is low, common, the way of ordinary people, unworthy and unprofitable, and there is devotion to self-mortification, which is painful, unworthy and unprofitable. Voiding both these extremes, the Tathgata has realized the middle path. It gives vision, it gives knowledge, and it leads to calm, to insight, to enlightenment, to nibbana. And what is that middle path? Dot it is simply the noble eightfold path, namely, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. This is the middle path realized by the Tathgata which gives vision, which gives knowledge, and which leads to calm, to insight, to enlightenment, to nibbana. He noble truth of suffering, dukkha, is this, birth is suffering, aging is suffering, sickness is suffering, death is suffering, sorrow and lamentation, pain, grief and despair are suffering, association with the unpleasant is suffering, dissociation from the pleasant is suffering, not to get what one wants is suffering and grief, the five aggregates of attachment are suffering. He noble truth of the origin of suffering is this, it is this thirst craving, which produces re-existence and re-becoming, bound up with passionate greed. It finds fresh delight now here and now there, namely, thirst for sense pleasures, thirst for existence and becoming, and thirst for non-existence, self-annihilation. He noble truth of the cessation of suffering is this, it is the complete cessation of that very thirst, giving it up, renouncing it, emancipating oneself from it, detaching oneself from it. He noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering is this, it is simply the noble eightfold path, namely right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Question mark is is the noble truth of suffering, Dukkha? Such was the vision, the knowledge, the wisdom, the science, the light, that arose in me with regard to things not heard before. His suffering, as a noble truth, should be fully understood. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the wisdom, the science, the light, that arose in me with regard to things not heard before. His suffering, as a noble truth, has been fully understood. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the wisdom, the science, the light, that arose in me with regard to things not heard before. Question mark is is the noble truth of the origin of suffering? Such was the vision. Dot. His origin of suffering, as a noble truth, should be abandoned? Such was the vision. Dot. His origin of suffering, as a noble truth, has been abandoned? Such was the vision. Dot. With regard to things not heard before, his is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering? Such was the vision. Dot. His cessation of suffering, as a noble truth, should be realized? Such was the vision. Dot. His cessation of suffering, as a noble truth, has been realized? Such was the vision. Dot. With regard to things not heard before, question mark his is the noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering? Such was the vision. Dot. His path leading to the cessation of suffering, as a noble truth, should be followed. Cultivated? Such was the vision. Dot. His path leading to the cessation of suffering, as a noble truth, has been followed. Cultivated? Such was the vision, the knowledge, the wisdom, the science, the light, that arose in me with regard to things not heard before. As long as my vision of true knowledge was not fully clear in these three aspects, in these twelve ways, regarding the four noble truths, I did not claim to have realized the perfect enlightenment that is supreme in the world with its gods, with its emras and brahmas, in this world, with its recluses and biyamanas, with its princes and men. But when my vision of true knowledge was fully clear in these three aspects, in these twelve ways, regarding the four noble truths, 
then I claimed to have realized the perfect enlightenment that is supreme in the world, with its gods, its emras and brahmas, in this world with its recluses, and brhmas, with its princes and men, and a vision of true knowledge, arose in me thus, my heart deliverance is unassailable, this is the last birth, now there is no more re-becoming, rebirth, this the blessed one said, the group of five bhikkhus was glad, and they rejoiced at his words.